In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Living God, we know that you are all power and that you are all might. And you have created someone way beyond us, but yet we are the apple of your eye. And yet Jesus has become one lower than the angels to save us and to bring us up to full maturation in the Spirit. Lift us up through the word, cleansing us, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, amen. 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 When the angels were created, if you go in your Bible to Ezekiel 1, we'll look at the cherubim. Amen. Are you excited? When God creates, he, the word is bara. You remember that word? Bara. That's found where? In Genesis. What chapter? Verse 1. Verse? First chapter. Verse? Oh. Two? What? Well, oh, that is. Um, right. Sorry. And when God creates, only He can create. Exactly. And if you want to see the healing power of God, it's always connected to Him creating. Healing is connected to creating. So that word is Rafa. Sounds like Rafa. Now when you have a Rafa connected to God creating us, this is where the angels come in. The angels are always connected with creation and the power of God. Now, if you want to see a physical healing, anybody need to be physically healed ever? Yeah, sure. You've got to represent with a spiritual healing first. Amen. So you've got to go from bara to rafa, not from rafa to bara. Oh, okay. This means create, this means to heal. Oh, wow. So when you have the angels coming in, they it's very easy to be healed physically, which would be a rafa, but only God can create us, which is a bara. Mm -hmm. So the angels are right here, and as they're in between the bara and the rafa, now we come into the cherubim. We are whisking ourselves back to a time period. In Ezekiel 1, well, here's our, our project, Ezekiel 1. Then we're going to go from Ezekiel 1 to Ezekiel 28 to Exodus 25. Okay, if we have, if time permits. Amen? What was the third one? Ezekiel, uh, Exodus, Exodus 25. Exodus, no, that was the second one. Ezekiel 1, Ezekiel 28, 28, 25, and then Exodus 25. So that's an outline for today. Amen? Mm -hmm. Do you like Ezekiel? Yes. Now this is when he sees the wheel. Ezekiel sees the wheel way up. You don't remember that song? <laughs> Everyone with me in Ezekiel? Yes. Yeah. Alright, now Ezekiel lived in a town, and the name of the town was called what? Babylon. Did you ever hear that before? Yes. And when he's living in Babylon, it is the... Um, turn to person next to you, you're going to get good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Someone took Ezekiel out of my Bible. Would you please put it back in? I won't be mad. All right, thank you. Is that the Lamentations? All right. <laughs> now, Ezekiel chapter 1. And a cheap, uh, we're going to meet these interesting creatures called the cherubim. Okay. Amen? Oh, amen. Now, they're going to appear in the garden... That, that's why my little promo on uh, creation. Mm -hmm. So your healing and well-being depends on, ready? 
what you're doing spiritually. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to have to suffer. <laughs> He is a priest. He is in Babylon. The year is about 580 BC. Wow. Chapter 1. Um, <coughs> so let's get his vision. And a vision is a what? A hatan. Do you remember that? Hatan. Hatan. Everybody say hatan. 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 When you have a vision, it's something that you see during the day. When you have a night, it's called a dream. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So when you read the Acts of the Apostles, God says, "For really, this is why I said the fullness of Pentecost has not yet come upon us. Because if, if Pentecost comes upon us, the following things will begin to happen. Say you had two sons, John and Michael. They will start to see visions. And the older people, say a person like Larry, <laughs> he will start to have dreams. Oh, wow. So when you have people dreaming and visioning, then you know the fullness of the Spirit has fallen afresh on your family. Do I believe in dreams? Yes but you come to me for the interpretation. That's not my gift. Okay? okay? If, if you tell me your dream, I said you had too many anchovies on your pizza. I don't know what else to tell you. Amen? So, in the 13th year, verse 1, uh, what we're going to do is we'll cover chapter 1, chapter 28. In the 13th year, the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, I was among the exiles by the river Chabar. Ever say Chebar? Chebar. Now, when you're by a river, it's very important. We, we've had um, Negro spirituals down by the river. Okay, river always means I am connected to Jerusalem. So if you see yourself by a body of water, why? Because the, uh, the clouds come in, take up the, the, the water, and it travels over to Jerusalem, and you were there, so you were part of Jerusalem. So when you're in exile, it's very important to get near a river. So this is where he's going to have by the Chabar River, because what's he thinking of right now? Jerusalem. You got, are you getting this, sister? We, we have a note leads to Tenef River. Yes. What is Tenef? Tenef? Yeah. But the wings? I don't know. So, leads to the so here, we, here we have, um, if you underline that, the river, the heavens were open. Now, do you see that? Yes. Okay. You see the connection? We're at the river. Yeah, and the heavens were open. And then the heavens were open. Right. So now he's having a vision. How do you say the heavens? Here we come to the bara. The ha sha mai im. That means the heavens in Hebrew. Right here is the word for water. Right. And it was always in the Bible in the plural waters. So he's by the river, and all of a sudden the heavens are open. Now, when do you see that expression, the heavens are open? Um, the, the baptism of Jesus. The baptism of Jesus. Very good. Very good. The heavens are open. And some of us was just there a few weeks ago. Some of us are going to go soon. So you see the Hashemai and the heavens were open. Where else do you hear the, the heavens were open? Transfiguration. The transfiguration. The heavens are open when salvation comes. So he's in Iraq. He's in Babylon. Babylon and Iraq are the same country, right? So he sees this vision, and then all of a sudden he says, so I saw visions of God. 
There's the what? The Hatan. Right. He sees the visions of God. So, what do we know about this day? It's, a, it's, a, it's the day, right? Yes, it's a day. How many days in heaven are there? One. One. Now watch what he starts to say. Is this scary or what? And then he says, on the fifth day of the exile of King Jehoiakim, the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel the priest. Or we know he's a priest, right? Mm -hmm. So we know he, that he deals with what? Sacrifices. To be a priest means you have sacrifices in you. Are you all priest? Yes. 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 Are you a priest, madam? Yes. yes. Does your husband exercise his priesthood as the, the head of your house? Does I'll question him later. <laughs> so um, we we have the we have the hatan. Okay, we have the priest, the son of Buzzy. Isn't that a great name for a father, Buzzy? <laughs> Buzzy. I mean, you can make this up. I mean, this is not an ordinary biblical. How's Buzzy doing? Buzzy. <laughs> okay. The, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chabar. And the hand of the Lord was upon him. There's your Yad. Right. So what happens when the hand of God is going to be upon them? Now watch this. This is good stuff. Are you getting good stuff? Yes. This means the sovereignty and the power of God have arrived. What's Yad? This Yad is Yad. So here comes, if you write in there Hebrew, it's the hand upon them. You got that? <laughs> Sister, are you getting excited sure, about this? Sure, let me know. <laughs> the hand coming? You got the hand? Yes. <laughs> right now, when the hand of God is upon you, you enter into God's sovereignty. What does that mean? To enter into sovereignty, he's, he's going to do something for you. All of a sudden, not prescribed, but it's all of a sudden. Now, if my witness about God in my life, I would say one word, the sovereignty of God. Right. You know, German Irish background, uh, my family wasn't any particularly religious or anything. We went to church on Sunday. End of story. That's it. But God came with his hand right. <laughs> and he sovereignly picked me up and said, here's your direction. Wow. He, he did that at the age of six. Wow. And look what happened. <laughs> so what happens to Ezekiel? The son of who? Buzzy. 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 What name is that? You know what that means? Buzzy. Buzzy. Okay. So now, what does I mean? I. In Hebrew. My. So it's my buzz. My buzz. <laughs> My booze. Booze. My, my booze. My booze. <laughs> As I looked, uh, uh, and the hand of the Lord was upon him there. So right now, put in a little note there, he's going to have a sovereign action of God. Now, did, did he know it was coming? What a way to open a book, right? Yeah. What, what a way to open a book. As I looked, behold, a, stor a stormy wind came out of the north. Now, north means what? The enemy coming. The enemy. In. So he sees. How do you say the storm? How about the north? It's coming from the north. North means the enemy. All right, where is Israel and where is Iraq to Israel? We have another note there. Go ahead. Our note is that the north, first of all, the ruach, the wind. Yes. Okay, is the theophany of the, the Lord. Right. Right? Right. And the north, we're saying, is God's throne. Right. So how could the enemy be in the north? Also, the enemy comes from the north. That's why God has to bump them off and take over. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Because that goes to Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. Isaiah 14? Which we're going to get into in a, in a, a lot of the, we're studying a lot of the prophets here. Wow. So, so the north is the power of God, right? The Ruah, and I was going to write down the word again, Shirako. 
a powerful wind comes in. Oh, all right. Now when Job sees God, he sees God in a powerful wind. So what is he seeing now? He's seeing the hand of God, so what's he going to see if the hand of God's upon you? You're going to see God. But traditionally also, the enemy comes in from the north. But they're already in enemy territory, they're exiles. So the north represents, way up north, represents the power of God. If you were to look at Isaiah 12, uh, uh, Isaiah 14, 12 to 14, it says, I'm going to try to destroy God, I'm going north. Wow. Mm -hmm. So why does the enemy come in from the north all the time? Because what is an enemy saying? He's fighting God. Oh, he's fighting God. Right. Exactly. Are you getting this? Yeah. Now, so what do we need now? We need some angels. Good stuff? Yes. Mm -hmm. And behold a great cloud. If you underline a great cloud, what is that? A theophany. Now, what happened to the cloud that the Jews were following? Here it is. Remember they were following the cloud by? Day and the pillar of fire by night. Here's the cloud. Wow. What happened to that cloud in Solomon's time? It went inside the building, remember? Yes. This is five, about 580 B.C. Solomon's temple was built about 960 B.C. 960. So how many more years later is this? A little less than 400 years away. So now comes the great... Well, amen? Then he says there, with brightness around it and fire flashing from it continuing. Now, so what happens, I get the cloud and the... Fire. 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 So what do I have, brothers and sisters? If I'm being Exodus. led by the cloud during the day and the what? Exodus. What do I have? Exodus. Night and day, day and night. Now watch this. Is this really good? Yes. What do I have here is the fire within the cloud, the cloud within the fire. Wow. When I was doing the baptism of the Lord, I told the people, when you really want to understand what Jesus' baptism means, and some of us will go there in a few weeks, what you'll understand is the water is in the fire, the fire is in the water. Now what happens is, so what happens when we have fire and water, to, fire and cloud together? There's the, the Shekinah, which is not in the Bible, Shekinah is the outside meeting the kabod, which is the inside, which is in the Bible. So you have the cloud, and then you have the what? The fire, which is the esh. When God appears in the Bible, He is always fire. Deuteronomy 5. Exodus. Exodus chapter what? Three. God's always in the fire. I'm trying to go slow so you can grab this. So what are we going to see already? How many know we're in for a lot of mind-boggling sights in front of us? Hmm. Yes, Ben. Oh, you're seeing heaven. You're sure. seeing heaven. Yes, you're seeing a, you're seeing a glimpse of heaven. Next he says to us there, uh, if you circle the word, the midst of the fire, that's the batok, that's going into the midst, verse, um, as we were gleaming bronze, verse 5, and from the midst of it came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was the appearance they had, the form of men, each had four faces. I mean, here comes the four faces. You are now being introduced to cherubim. Four faces. How many think that just blows your mind of yeah. angels right now? <laughs> we saw last week's angels were a tube with <laughs> six wings. <laughs> and by the way, do these seraphim and cherubim appear to people? No. <laughs> when they appear to us, they look like what? Us. Because if we saw a guy coming at you with a tube and six wings, do you think you'd be scared? 
<laughs> or somebody with four faces. You think they? Yes. We're we're we're, we're only used to the uh, the the two faced variety, not the four faced, right? So now we come and, and we see the four faces. Now, put a little note there because this is the book of Revelation, chapter four, when we go into heaven. Now, here's something mind-boggling by Catholic Bible scholars. You want to hear Catholic Bible scholars? Ready? This is what it means to go to Mass. Wow. That's verse 5. You can see that in Revelation 4, the four oh. creatures. Oh, right. The I four see. living creatures. Who's, who's a great proponent of that? People like Scott Horn. Wow. Jeff Keevens. So when you when you when you see this, this is you going to church. When you go to church, you're not going to see, you know, Italians redeem. You go to the Duda, the zeros and everything else. You're going to see these creatures. Doesn't it sound like a little science fiction right now? Yeah. So if you, if, if you look at verse number five, and this was their appearance, they had four, the form of men, verse, but each had four faces, each of them had four wings. Wow. So now, not only had that, they had the wings on, but their faces are here, wings here, and wings here. So what are the wings for? Mm -hmm. Surface and mobility, right? When you go to glory, you always have to serve the living God. Yes? Yes. And when you serve the living God, you are fulfilling because you cannot stay in heaven and sit and play a harp all day long. As you think of your daughter's tuition that you just paid, you just can't, that's, it's not sitting around. It's activated in the spirit. So this is a lot of power going forth here. Their legs were straight, the soles of their feet were like the soles of a calf's foot. And they sparkle like burnished, burnished bronze. So I mean, for this, this is some power you see released here. Under their wings of their four sides, they had human hands, and the four had their faces and their wings thus. Their wings touched one another. So what happens to the cherubim here? They're, they're touching one another. So if I have a wing here touching another, so again we see a close what? Connectedness. Remember we met the seraphim? When we met the seraphim, they turned to one another, and seraph would, would come more, the whole idea of the burning ones. They would touch one another and they would say, holy, holy, holy. Now these, these angels, are the cherubim, are now also, you can see, connection with them. So, um, when we have our guardian angels, which we'll get into a study on them, we will see that they are singularly for us. But here, here we can see kind of a community of them, sister. Would you mind drawing four wings of four sides of the body? I mean, I don't understand that. A wing, <laughs> wing, 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 hand, 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 hand. <laughs> I mean, they have four faces. Yeah, hello. And then they have wings. <laughs> wings, wings, wings. And where's the four hands? Under um, the wings. Under the wings. No, on the four sides. It says, yes. under their wings, on their four sides, they had human hands. How do you figure that one out? you got to work on That's it. That's two <laughs> sides. <laughs> don't have it yet. <laughs> it's not, it's not, That's not quite right. <laughs> <laughs> if the face is here, I mean, give me a break. Right. Here and here. Does that make four wings? How, uh, that clears it up. <laughs> so one in front of the wing, one in the back of the wing? I don't know. Forget it. Use your Italian imagination. Right? As for the likeness of their faces, each had the face of a man in the front. Uh oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I, I'm going to have verse 10 and say, this is Revelation. This is Revelation, all right. They have the four in the face of a lion on the right side, the four in the face of an ox on the left side, the four in the face of an eagle on the back. Now, when we have their faces like this, 
A face of the man in what the front. What was, your, what was our promo note? Our promo note is create and being healed. Right? Now, if you're going to be healed, you've got to be right spiritually. And I've been reminded this week is how to get right spiritually. I want you, I, can I give you homework? Yes. It's an easy homework assignment. Yeah. Keep quoting the Word of God to yourself. Take your five of her favorite Bible passages and keep saying it. So we can and then you're bringing in your being the healing remedy spiritually. When you get healed spiritually, it can deal with your physicality. Okay, now watch this. When we have these angels and these, these faces, face number one is the who? The, the man. man. With, He's on the right what's side. What's face number two? The ox. No, no, no. The, the lion. lion. The lion is on the left. What's face number three? Ox. Uh, ox. The ox. What's face number four? Eagle. 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 Okay, now. What Ezekiel sees here, again, this is Revelation 4. Revelation 4. And this is going to church on Sunday. That's why the church has adopted, which many people are in a fog over. When you have a different gospel, there's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John before you. What? Wow. That's true. That's true. Wow. What's hidden? Now, let me explain. When you come to each of these gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you can see they all are, this is strength. This is, now remember my primo note, this is all of creation bowing down to the one who creates. So, the man is the highest of what? The kingdoms. Matthew. Jesus goes to the mountains, doesn't he? The lion. Matthew, Mark. Wait a minute. Okay, so we have the highest of the forest. Matthew, Mark. Ox. We have the highest of what? What's the ox the highest of? The fields. The field. oh. uh, and the eagle, the highest of the skies. Mm. So the so ox when you, is Luke? When you, when, you go, when you go into church, when you go into church, there it is. Say that again. The ox is Luke. Yes. So, well, who, do, who does man a lot? What? Who does man? Eagle is John, because it's high, right? Oh, eagle. Who talks about who talks about man a lot in the in the uh, in the Gospels? Matthew. Matthew. You think? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Hmm. Matthew, so now, when you deal with creation, this is a new mind blow. We need a whole night on that. You do need a whole night mm -hmm. on it. This is very mystical. Yes. Now, when they when they hold up, I had an interesting lady reading the word today. But when you hold up the word, you might see an image of one of these on there. Mm -hmm. you, you haven't looked yet. Mm -hmm. You have a look at the book when it's really yeah. done nice. Mm. When it's really done nice, you have one of these on it. And that's the book of Revelation entering into your church. Mm. When you read Revelation 4 and Revelation 5, mm. you have these angels represented in depiction. So what are you saying when you go to church? You have the cherubim angel right, right in church with you. Sister. No, I'm, uh, I just need to hold on to this. Man. You need to hold on to this. I mean, that's you never heard this before? Yeah. Oh, no. Come on. But yes, sir. Five, Brother, Brother, that, I mean, the highest of the forest, highest of the fields, highest of the skies. Man was the highest of creation. Creation. Oh, yeah. creation. The lion. So is. now, if we were to summarize all of this, if we were to summarize all of this, it's called the highest. Why is John when you, if you go into church properly, 
-hmm. If you went to church properly, with all this great knowledge you're getting, you should be totally healed every time you leave. Mm -hmm. I told you another secret, how to get healed. Not to get sick. <laughs> you get healed by entering fully in. Now we got to confess. We all go to church and we have, and we're there for the right reason, but our minds are, go in a thousand directions. Yes? Mm -hmm. You think about your mother at home with the other people and how she walks around. Very interesting people you take care of. Amen? So how many would like to really enter in and going into the highest? If you go to the highest, this is easiest. She's still trying to work on the, what was being said here. Man, lion, ox, eagle. Yes. So when you got all of that, you got total knowledge of God. You got total experience all of, creation, of God. All of creation bows down to him. So the cherubim may now... Watch, watch when we really travel with cherubim's angels. Yes, go ahead. Why is, why is John in the back, in the back of the head? The eagle. Not necessarily. Don't it see said it. the back of the head. Here. No, don't see it necessarily <laughs> as the back of the head. They're just describing the one view that as he sees it and the Cherubar River. Well, Where is he facing? What? Jerusalem. 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 Don't forget, no, <laughs> you don't understand. I'm no, trying I to do tell you. Understand. It doesn't mean the back of the head, it just means the face when of you the look at one direction, it's the back of the head. At the back. But if he turns this way, <laughs> yeah. it goes to the front. Do you get that? Yep. Yeah. All right. Good Ibu stuff. Lacks Brother at Peter. The back. Ibu lacks at the back. All right, now. So everybody, everybody put a big box around verse 10. Okay, now, this is going into church. Do, do I need to show you that? I better show you that. Yeah. Go with me to Revelation chapter 4. Now in Revelation 4, they give you the order of the evangelist. Okay, here's, here's the order that John sets them up, and this is what the church uses. So, everybody with me around verse 6. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures. Do you see them? Yep. Full of eyes in front and behind. That means they're all what? Seeing. Right. Next, the first living creature was like a lion. Matthew. The second living creature like an ox. Mark. The third creature like the face of a man. Luke. And the fourth like a flying eagle. John. That's, really good. That's the order that the church uses. Mm. FYI. Mm -hmm. So I, I want you to see in those two chapters, chapter 4 and chapter 5, it's called going to church on Sunday. Do you see that every every day? So we're on the, what, what picture would we be seeing if if your church has the picture of the gospel, you would see the. Mm -hmm. You see the. We have it ox. in our church, the four gospel yes. writers. Yes. Yeah, on the wall. Yes. Yeah, you know. Yes. Are you getting this, sister? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to church. No, no I, I just want to show you what's happening when you go to church. But you're so fogged out, you don't know what's going on. How many know that most of us, even on a typical Sunday, miss going to church? Because you miss the beauty that's really there. Mm -hmm. Which you really, I wish the Holy Spirit would give us all-seeing glasses of what's going on there in the spiritual holy realm. Mm -hmm. But I think, because you and I are great men and women of faith, if we activate our faith, I believe you could see that. So chapter 4 and chapter 5 of Revelation feeds right off of this. So please box in back to Ezekiel 1. Now it gets more interesting. Are you ready for this? Are you grasping this, sister? Yes. All right, now. So what are the hands for? What was the hand of God, right? Yes. We are reaching up to him. 
Now, back with me to Ezekiel 1, please. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Their wings were spread out, such were their faces, verse 11. And their wings were spread out above. Each creature had two wings. Each of them touched the wing of another. So you can see that there's, these angels are always in what? Community to one another. Isn't that interesting? The seraphim, the highest. And so now you can see why. Which were you going to help me discern a question, Sister Marie? Was Satan a seraphim or a cherubim? Seraphim. Why they drag down other demon spirits with them? I think it was a the, the seraphim is going holy, holy, holy. The wings of these, these four wings, six wings, four wings, they're going to each other, and Satan says, let's go down, and he drags the others with them. And they become demon spirits. So which one was it? Against their will? No, they said yes to it. Okay. No, they said yes. Because they don't get to sin once. And what, if they sin once, they become a demon. So which ones were they? The children? Yes. So, I mean, when, when, when you're having... Both. When you're having a fight with evil and doing spiritual warfare, guess what? You, you are being... Now, do you have power over them? Yes but you don't know how to use it. It's being like a, a, uh, it's being like a five-year-old trying to fight um, or drive a car or do something really big that you can't, you, you'll grow into it, but you can't do it yet because you're not strong on the inside. And that's, how, that's who we are. So how many have ever implored in your fight against evil the cherubim, the seraphim? Are you saying both left? Yes. And what, what's our main what's our main fighting going on now? Principalities. I thought they didn't have free will. Yes, they do. Every creature has free will. I thought the angels did. No, they do. But their free will is once they blow it, they're gone. Once. Mm. They can't be redeemed. Mm. There's no... Uh, I, I get this question asked a lot. Can the Satan repent? No. Does he have any desire to repent right now? No. He has damned himself and he's living in his own damnation. And even right now, he doesn't think he will be not he, he doesn't think he'll be thrown into hell. Hmm. Revelation twenty says, You're going to the cooker. Hmm. Sister Marie's mystified here. Yeah, yeah. And their wings were spread out above. Each creature had two wings. Each touched the wing of another while two covered their bodies. Verse 12. And each went straight forward where the spirit would... Um, if you underline there, verse 12, where the spirit would go, they went with... What they went without turning as they went. You got it? They don't turn. They just go no, straight. They're going, going, right. Hmm. So isn't that interesting? Yeah, so good. now, what do we have about the cherubim? <laughs> they are spirit-led called the ruah. Hmm. Ruah led. So the spirit comes upon them, they go. Oh. So how many would like to be... Now, what did we just learn about them? We're, we're, we're being massed into creation. And when we're being massed into creation, we now know they are spirit led. How many like the cherubim already? Yeah. Kind of scary looking dudes, but I'll tell you that, you know. Kind of, kind of, kind of moving. And then, now watch this. In the midst of the living creatures, there was something that looked like burning coals of fire. What did Isaiah contact? Burning coals. Burning, burning coals. coals. Yeah, right. And uh, burning coals of fire, like torches moving back and forth. What's back and forth? Taking all the movement. For example, how many know that in the Bible, there's an interesting passage, I think most people don't know what it means or don't even contemplate it. It says, when the sheep fold is open, the sheep are coming and going. They're coming, what that means is movement into the pastures of God. But it's called coming and going. So please God that all of us are moving into the pastures of God. Most of us are moving into the power of God. Amen? Amen. How many know for everyone in this room there's more power of God for you to experience? Yes. And that's why we want to, we want to share and know this scripture because I want you to be the most powerful for the days that are going to be coming ahead. And knowing that only your power comes from not you, it comes from the Almighty God. See, Satan said it came from me. And that's why he, God says goodbye. And we're going to read about that fall in uh, a time. 
So if you underline that back and forth, you see the back and forth? They cover all the directions. Next he says there, um, uh, among the living creatures, how many living creatures are there? Four. 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 Okay, there are the four living creatures. And out of the fire went forth lightning. Now, lightning is a, um, again, th these are all called theophanies. Everybody remember all the theophanies? Now, when God is present, you must see the following things when God is present. Cloud, mm -hmm. fire, what else? What, what, what does it say here? Lightning. Lightning. When you go to Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments in Exodus 19, what do you see? Cloud, fire, lightning. And what else also starts to happen? The earth starts to shake. So what do you have? You have the earth quaking. Have you seen these things going on in Earth right now? Very much. Are you going to see them more? Very much. Very, very much. So here, we, here we're in the midst of some incredible theophany of God. Theophany, God manifests Himself. Now, this is really good. What God is doing is saying, Look, people, I'm alive. But Jesus has not been the incarnate Lord yet, has he? So how is he going to show you, down here on earth, who he is? Cloud, fire, lightning, earthquakes. And then Ezekiel gets scared the hell out of him. In Ezekiel chapter 19, what happens to him? He sees all this and he says, But I didn't see God. Then he sees God in the, the voice. Well, and why was it scary? Because God starts to speak. But Jesus isn't around yet, is he, so to speak? Are you getting all this? So when Ezekiel sees all this, do you think he's overwhelmed? How could you move from chapter 1 into 2 anytime soon? What a start to his vocation as a priest. Now, what happens to Ezekiel, he enters into a whole different plane. When you have a vision, it's what God is going to be doing for you. There's another vision which scared, scared him very much, Daniel 7. He had a vision of creatures. How many creatures did Daniel have? Four. What were the creatures? They were all animals, tearing up one another. Did he get scared? Daniel said, I'm petrified. Mm -hmm. do, you think, do you think our friend here is petrified? I think so. Yes. Father Bill, we have a note here from one of the studies that we did in verse 12. And each went straight forward. Wherever the spirit would go, they went without turning as they went. And then we have a note saying, this was the curtain in the Holy of Holies in the yes. temple. Yes, yes. So what I was thinking, you didn't think of that, but... You are, now. The back of his head, the back of the head was John. So, that face is the tabernacle. Yes. Thank you. That was right. Yes, now. <laughs> now, which we, we did a big study. Excuse me, I'm very okay. Sorry. Now, on top, of the, on top of the curtain, in Jesus' dead, it was 45 feet high. It was scarlet, right. and on it, embroidered, it had cherubim angels. Wow. 45 feet high. And so when Jesus died on the cross, what happened to those cherubim angels? It split right down. Wow. They weren't attached to one another. They weren't attached to one another anymore. Mm. Oh, so heaven was messed up. Heaven was opening. Mm -hmm. So who's guarding, so no to speak? No longer the same. Right. No longer the no same. No longer the it same. It cannot be the same. No. It cannot be the same. That, that was a, that was a, Next. Okay. Now, circle there, verse 13, the burning coals of fire. Wow. And you can see Isaiah in there, right? Yes. Remember he said Isaiah 6 today? Yes. Yeah. I'm a man of unclean lips. 
Like torches moving back and forth, living creature, the fire was bright, and out of fire went forth lightning. So, out of the fire comes the lightning. Right now, there's an interesting phenomenon happening on the earth, right now. All the plagues of Egypt are coming back. Mm. Every single one of them. Yeah, this Mecca this just got swamped with uh, bugs, locusts. Yeah. Which country? Saudi Arabia. Uh. Mm. And I wouldn't want to be going to Jerusalem, it's very scary. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Somebody just got murdered today. Oh, stop. In Jerusalem. Mm. So, the power of God, the lightning comes out of the fire. Now watch this. Are you getting good stuff? Yes. Inside the fire, remember, when Moses was going up in Exodus 3, when he's going up the mountain called Sinai, which means the bush, what does he say? He sees the angel inside the bush. Wow. Yes. Exodus 3, verse 1, 2, Which 3. Which one? Now, here's an interesting line which we'll get to. It says in Exodus 3, it says, The angel of the Lord. Who was inside? Now, remember it said when you take the word in Hebrew for fire, the word is esh. esh. Right. You put Jesus in name, Yeshua. Yeshua. Oh my uh, gosh. The name of Jesus. So how many know the name of Jesus is inside is the word fire? Wow. Now when you go to Luke twelve forty nine, he says, I have come to light a fire, fire because that's the center of who I am. I'm pausing to give you some wow. contemplative moments. Then, then Ezekiel sees, um, and the living creatures darted back and forth like a flash of lightning. So the, 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 there's this movement here. here everybody's in movement. They're in power movements. Now as I looked at the living creatures, I saw a wheel. It wasn't a spaceship. <laughs> I saw a wheel. Okay, and inside the wheel he says, um, a wheel upon the earth beside the living creatures, one for each of the four of them. So how many wheels were in there? Four. Four. So he looks and he sees four wheels. Now, a wheel means what? Movement. So when you go into glory, and what he's seeing is incredible movement in the spirit. When you're in the Spirit, there's always movement. Amen? Now, what you and I experience here is we don't experience that movement like we should. How many want to get into the Spirit of God? You'll experience another dimension. Now, I believe you all love God. I believe you're all redeemed people. But I don't believe we really went into that Spirit to heaven. Right now, the word from on high from God is this. I want to show you how to live in the power of my Spirit. So Ezekiel, the priest, going into a brand new power of mysticism, sees these wheels. What, let's find out about those wheels. Verse 16, as for the appearance of the wheels and their construction, their appearance was like the gleaming of a chrysolite. The four had the same likeness. Their construction being, as it were, a wheel within a wheel. So phenomenal was the movement. They just, when they went, they went in all four directions. So what's happening to all these wheels? Now we got to make this 3D, everybody. Okay, I wish I could do a hologram for you. Which yeah. is the next thing you will? We will do holograms one day in this room. And so one is going this way, one is going this way, one is going all four directions. Now, what do all four directions represent, sister? It's the arc of the presence of God. It's the power of the presence of God. Now, so there is tremendous power and spirit going on here. When you have the spirit, it's just not like, poof. When you are spirit-led, are you all spirit-led? Galatians 5 and 25. When you are spirit-led, 
you are being propelled in the power of movement. That's why I get nervous when our kids make confirmation. Oh, Nothing oh, seems to happen to them. Galatians 5.25. If you are spirit-led, you are moving. Personally, i got a problem. My personal problem is I can't stay sick when you're in the spirit. I said, how can anybody who gets this stuff just sit down? Amen? Even for me physically. I know I need to sit down in the spirit and meditate and contemplate, which is very important for my being cleansed from my infirmities. Mm -hmm. Do I have infirmities? Absolutely. What, what's going to cleanse me is the word of the living God. Are you amen. getting this, sister? Yes. So now, look at all these Look at all these wheels going. Amen? The wheels had rims, verse 18, and spokes, and the rims were full of eyes all, all around. So what's happening is phenomenal movement, all eyes means omniscience. So what about these angels? They're all knowing. So what are they getting? They're getting a blessing from God. So you see these eyes. Does this sound like uh, a little bit of a nightmare or it's yeah, scary, isn't it? Charming. Okay. So you, you would say, hey, Ezekiel, lay off the pizza at night. What, what, you know, this is really... And when the living creatures went, the wheels went beside them and the living creatures rose from the earth, the wheels rose. So I, I can see here with all the eyes, it's a... When John looks up in Revelation 11:19, he sees the Ark of the Covenant. When he looks up and sees the Ark of the Covenant, there's the power of God. This is the power, this is one of the power sections of, of, of God. So when the cherubim come, you, you can see that they're very powerful angels, aren't they? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very, very powerful. And by the way, this is called Church on Sunday. You haven't yet grasped the power of the Holy Spirit when you go to church, right? If you knew, you wouldn't have left so quick. You'd still be there right now. And really, really meditating on this power. Then he says to us there, whenever the Spirit, underline verse 20, whenever the Spirit would go, they went and the wheels rose along with them, but the Spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. So guess what? The angels have to know their power source. And what, what's the, what do the wheels do when you have a wheel? They're moving somewhere. Right. And so, what's the source of all the power wheels going in four different directions with eyes all around? They're moving the angels. Right. So the angels have their moving power parts. Amen? Sister Marie. Wow. Well, it's interesting that they're four-sided, but they need the wheels to move. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's really something. <laughs> then look at verse 21. When they rose, they went, and when they stood, they stood. And when those rose from the earth, the wheels rose along with them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. Over the heads of the living creature, there was likeness of a firmament shining like crystal. Now, underline the word firmament. Where do we hear the word firmament again? Creation. Creation. Right. What day is it? Day four. This, and, and let, let, me tell, let me tell you what the Hebrew word is. In Hebrew, the word would be rakia. Wow. So how many would like to see what happened on day four? So now we see the new creation. Here, now are, are you all new creatures here? Yes. Second Corinthians 5.17. Everybody here is a new creature, but guess what? You haven't seen this yet. And if you went to church with your Holy Spirit glasses on today, there was this saint called Emily. She received her first communion at the age of 13. She received the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. She levitated off the floor, she came back down, and she died. Oh, wow. Imagine making your first communion and you're gone. Wow. Her name is Emily, if you want to call her Saint Emily. And just for your FYI, St. Bernadette Suderu, yes. that's what time she's making her first communion too. Wow. And so they really entered in, amen? We have kids going to make their first communion in two months or whatever, they don't enter in. No. Imagine what they could see. Imagine who they are, amen? Mm -hmm. Now, underline the word firmament. Now, how do you say firmament in Hebrew? 
Rakia. Everybody say Rakia. 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 All right. Now remember, remember my promo note. The bara. Now, let's see. Go to chapter 1 of Genesis, which is tomorrow's reading, by the way. You've got the four faces of the, of the four Gospels, but they can't move without the wheel. That's right. The Spirit. Without the Spirit. That's exactly. right. Exactly. You got it, sister. Oh. And that's why you go to church and people don't. Go to they, Genesis 1. They weren't taught. Not well, I the hope their second grade teacher teaches them something. I don't mean that. They, we have the same. We have their not. We have not. not we have not clued you into this. Genesis no, I mean. Go to Genesis. That's why you need learned. you need Bible study. Amen. Yeah. All right. Now go to Genesis one fourteen. Are you with me? Is that the fourth day? That's the fourth day. Okay. Let there be lights in the room. Okay, everybody with me, verse, verse 14? Now you can see in verse uh, verse number 7 that God made the, uh, or verse 6, see the firmament, the rakia? Now just note something here in these, these verses. Note in these days after, this, after the light comes on. Um, when were the angels created? I told you there's a strong belief they were created in verse 2. How do you spell R-A-Q-I-A. Now, when you see the firmament, notice in day two, verse six, you see the firmament, Rakia? Yes. All right, look at verse uh, nine, the, the heavens. See, see the heavens there? Yeah. Look at verse 14. There's the firmament again. See the right. firmament? Yeah. Look at the next day, verse five. The firmament of the heavens. See that? Verse 20. Oh, verse 20. See the firmament? Yep. And then, when God creates us, <coughs> what's, what's important then? We're in His image and likeness. likeness. And guess what the firmament becomes? <coughs> his image and, and likeness. Whoa. So what does is, what is Ezekiel see when we have these cherubim angels? Now, mystically, they're going to appear on the Ark of the Covenant. Everybody know what the Ark of the Covenant is? You ready to just look at that? Sister Marie, you got it all down? Wow. So the front of it. The Rakia, everybody say Rakia. Yeah. Now watch this, this is really good. Is this good, sister? So then we got the wheel. Yeah. That's being made in his image and likeness. That's being made in his image and likeness. Sister, you've got it. March around the building. Wow, that chills head to toe. Alright, now watch this, good stuff. I just threw myself off, and that's not hard to do. All right, now, <laughs> Sorry about that. Let, let me show you something. Are you getting this, Brother Peter? Yes, he's saying in verse 18 that that's Jesus creating, or God creating us in his image. When you go to verse 26, 27, that's the image and likeness. Notice how much the firmaments are being used, and then the firmament when it comes to us. What the firmament? Right. So yeah. God takes all of creation and then he looks at Simeon and goes and then and then glad wind says, Wow. So what happened when Adam saw Eve the first time? Everything that moves on the earth. You got it. They have control over that. You got it. We've got control over that. You got it. Oh. Can you say that again? <laughs> she wants to hear that repeated. <laughs> Sister Marie, go ahead. Give her your insight. Well, the whole sense that that man now has the, the firmament of God is in, in his image and likeness. So not only do we have the four names, but we've got the wheel. 
and the wheel is what gives us power to move. And then he say, and God says to them, be fruitful and multiply. You have, you can fill the earth and subdue it. And you have, you've got the power over everything that moves upon the earth. Hello? Mm -hmm. So that's that. The, so what is, Ezekiel, that what is Ezekiel seeing with these cherubim angels? He's seeing the before picture. And now when we use it. Here's what I want you to do for your, your next time in the church. God, give me vision. Oh. If you really see it, you won't want to leave. Now watch this. This is good stuff. Sister, are you getting this? Yes. A lot of deep breaths. Sorry. I'm All right, sorry. now go with me to... See, when I do this, I never know what direction I'm going in on my... Oh, my face is here. If you go with me to Exodus 25, we'll be back to Ezekiel. This that was stage six. Yes. And it was very good. Yes. <laughs> Where are we going? We are going... To Exodus 25. Who? Isaiah 25. Exodus, Exodus, Exodus 25. Oh, Exodus. Yes. I'm sorry. Thank you. If you go to verse um, 19, this is the second group of angels. All right, now this is the making of the Ark of the Covenant. Everybody knows what the Ark of the Covenant is? It's a box four and a half feet by two and a quarter feet by two and a quarter feet. Inside, as you recall, are the Ten Commandments, which it would be the second time. The manna and Aaron's authority, Deuteronomy 32. Right. Let's find out what happens. Okay. Okay, everybody, everybody following? Mm -hmm. Everybody with me? Chapter 25 of Exodus, verse 9. Well, let's start in verse 18. You shall make two cherubim. And you shall make two cherubim. Okay. Cherub on the one end and the cherub on the other. So we're going to see when that is finally found, two cherubim. And what, what are they going to be doing? The, uh, you make the... Um, and one cherubim on the other end, and one piece with the, the mercy seat shall you make the cherubim on two ends. So what are these... Um, what are these angels doing? They're on mercy. They're on mercy. They're protecting the mercy They're on mercy. Yeah. Okay, so... L l let's, let's get our notes together now. So the cherubim are on mercy. My question, and it's just a question, and we, it's open for discussion, of course, who were the angels at the resurrection? Of course, I think if they saw this, they'd be scared of their minds. <laughs> so, listen to what he says. Uh, still with me in Exodus 25. Everybody with me? Make one cherub on the one end, the cherub on the other. One piece with the mercy seat shall you make the cherubim on two ends. Verse 20. The cherubim shall spread out their wings above. How many wings did they have? Four. 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 Their faces, hello, their faces to one another. Wow. How could they do that? <laughs> Gotta figure that one out. How could they figure Well, oh yeah. they have eight faces. Because they're in the, they're in the firmament. So the cherubim are doing what? Doing humility. Doing humility. They're in humble humility, right? Good stuff. Yeah. Is this getting deeper and deeper? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The cherubim shall spread out their wings above, overshadowing the mercy seat with their wings. Now underline the word overshadow. Mm -hmm. That's what happened when Mary received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Luke one thirty five. Yeah. That, um, that's what happened on Tabor. They were overshadowed. Circle the word overshadow because it, appear, it appears rare times, rare, I miss, 
it appears in Exodus 40. And the next time it appears is with Mary. Luke 1. And the next time and the final time it appears is the Transfiguration. We need to have an overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. What does it mean? Ready? When you are overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. You ready? How many would like to be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit? And by the way, you would be cloud, fire, lightning, earthquake, voice. What would happen if all that happened to us? We'd shake. Stay with me in cherubim. Exodus 25. Verse 20. The cherubim shall spread their wings above. Oversha Every underline overshadowing? Yes. The mercy seat with their wings. Their faces one to another. Toward the mercy seat the, um, shall the faces of the cherubim be. They're looking at one another, looking at... Now, one thing interesting about angels. We'll get to guardian angels. I don't know how they pull it off because I'm this dimension that God put us in. They take care of the little ones, and they worship God at the same time. Matthew 18.10. So, one thing when we enter into who these angels are, they have more functions than you and I can imagine, and they have more dimensions and power than we can imagine. So when Sister Marie just said, how can that be? They're beyond us. They have abilities way beyond us. Yes? How would they know how to make these angels? For the, um, in Exodus, how would they know how to make, you know... They God gave them that? directions here. No. What happened was this. That's a good question. If you read further on in the book of um, Exodus, Moses looked up and he saw the pattern of what everything will be. So God gave him a, 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 a picture of what they would be. And then he would describe in Exodus 35 to two men who would, who would do the Ark of the Covenant and make it. He would describe to them what they saw. For example, the other person on the Emmaus rock was Cleopas, and the other one was Luke. How do we know that? Because it was described that way, passed down to us. Sister. Wow. So, what are we discovering about the cherubim, the seraphim? They have more dimensions than we can imagine. The reason why we don't understand is because we're thinking in our own humanity. But now, one thing about the highest of creation, which everybody here is redeemed in Christ, you're new creatures in Christ, you are called to go way beyond this. You shall put the mercy seat atop the ark, right? Yes. That's not done without the wings. That's right. So it's the Spirit of God giving them That's the why God would say in Second Samuel 5 and 6, don't anybody touch this. Because when, when two men came to touch it, they sizzled to death. Father Bill, Father, Father Bill, with all the, the faces, so man was looking at man, lion looking at lion, ox looking at ox, eagle looking at eagle. With that, that was the fullness of the word, right? That's it. Kind of the, came the uh, wings, the, uh, the, the, the spirit. That is correct. The wheels. You're good. This is blowing my mind. Mm. Let's do a new color, cherubim. Yes. Father, this is a dumb question. But We're having a dumb know. question now. But yeah. what exactly is the mercy seat? That is an interesting question. Yeah. It's where the blood was poured and the forgiveness of sin came. Is it like an actual seat? Yes. Like yeah. it, it, it was gold, mm. and they put the blood of the lamb on it. Mm. That was Jesus. 
Hmm. Yes. When we were in Israel, yes. didn't we see a seat that was used? For that was called Moses' seat. Moses' seat. Oh. But that different. seat was in Chorasidon, which other tours do not see. Of course, I was the authority was being passed down. Okay. So that town said to Jesus, "We don't need you, mm -hmm. even though we see the miracles." got Moses' seat in our temple. Mm -hmm. And look what happened to them. Mm -hmm. We walk through the skeletal mm -hmm. remains. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. and then he says to us, I'm still... Now, put a little verse by verse 21. Now, here's the scary part. A good scary. And you shall put the mercy seat on the top of the ark, and in the ark... You shall put the covenant that I give you. That's the Ten Commandments. So if you underline there the Ten Commandments. The testimony. Uh, underline verse 22. There I will meet with you. Put a little note there. And our time is just about up. You're kidding. I will meet you. God can only meet you in mercy. Oh. Oh. So in my Bible, it doesn't have mercy seat, it says cover. Well, that's, that's an interesting rendition. Let me tell you what that says in Hebrew. Cover. And you're, you're, you're going to get excited if you know a little bit about Hebrew, and I think you do. I think you can get excited. The word is, ready, sister? The word for cover is kippur. Hmm. Wow. You ever hear of yom kippur? Uh, yom kippur. Yeah. The word kippur means the covering. Huh. So that's that's a great the the, the key pour which mm. is the covering. So what covered the ark was mm. mercy. Mm. And God says, "You want to meet me? Meet me in mercy. Mm. Mm. You can only meet God in mercy." So what's what's the first word when we go to church? Basically, after we sing our song, yeah. mercy. mercy. Mm. What happens? Did you anybody receive Eucharist today? Yes. 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 What did you say before you received him? Mercy, mercy, mercy. Mercy. Right. mercy. Did you mean it? Probably not. You just said well, a bunch of words. Did you, my did you mean it, sister? Yes. I saw flashes of lightning here this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, I think Marie's attempting to receive the Eucharist right after little George did. Wow, that's Amen. deep. It is deep. Yeah, that is very Okay, so underline that verse 22. Mm -hmm. And then, by the way, I didn't get all my work done tonight. That's all right. This is so good. How could you get your work? May God grant us more time in the Word. Amen. 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 Oh, wait, I got to this. Now, I will meet with you, and above the mercy seat from the two cherubim there upon the ark, I will speak with you. All right, not only will He give you mercy, oh, yeah. He will okay. speak with you. And then I will give you the commandment of this for the sons of Israel. Okay? Now, we, um, the next thing that happened, and I just, I'll just make a reference to it, is in Ezekiel, see the word I mentioned right here? Kavod? They saw, after all of this, in Ezekiel chapter 1, verse... There's the word firmament again. There's the rakia. Here's what he says, verse 26. And above the firmament, over their head, was the likeness of a throne. So what did they see? They saw the throne. How do you say throne? Merkabah. Now, when you go to the end of Ezekiel, what's the end of Ezekiel? The throne. What happens when we all go to heaven one day? We're going to see the throne. What did the seraphim circle around last week? The throne. What are the cherubim going to see? The throne. What were the uh, cherubim doing on the uh, top of the ark? The throne. What's mercy? The throne. How many like our God already, huh? Yeah. And above the firmament, their heads, there was a throne in appearance like sapphire. So what color is that? Blue. 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 And seated, because that's God's favorite color, seated, verse 26, 
the likeness of the throne of the likeness of, uh, of a human form. Underline that and put a triple star there. There's Jesus. There's Jesus. A likeness of a human form. So what happens to all of this, now watch this, all of this goes into what? Man. And there, there he is. Jesus is called the Son of Man. He's the highest of the highest. He's El Elyon. So all of this goes down to here. And so what does he see on the throne? Now watch this. This is good. And upward. How do you say upward? El Al. Mm. And upward from what appearance of his loins I saw as it were gleaming bronze like the appearance of fire enclosed around about him. So what do you see on the throne from Revelation 4 and Revelation 5? What do you see in church? Fire. Did you see fire today? Just two candles flickering on the altar. You guys see more than that. Yeah. The appearance of his loins I saw were appearance of fire, the brightness round about him. What does he see? He sees the kabod, the glory of God. And then we're done. And like the appearance of the bow, what's the bow? No more war. Where does that go back to Genesis? Does this sound creation again? Mm -hmm. yeah. Genesis, Genesis chapter 9. Mm -hmm. And in the cloud, on the day of rain, hello, are you seeing this? The day of rain mm -hmm. is because the arrow has shot. He looks at the throne. He sees somebody wounded. When you go to heaven, who are you going to see? Jesus. It looks like somebody wounded. Mm -hmm. If you fast forward to the book of Revelation, when you see the lamb, it's wounded. Mm -hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Somebody say, hmm. Mm -hmm. The appearance, such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of God. This is what they saw on the mountain of transfiguration. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Father, we just ask that the couple would be fresh upon us and the docks and the glory of God. Thank you for sharing with us these great insights into the power and the wisdom of God. Amen. And Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Next week, most interesting chapter is God the Seraphim, or is, is Satan the Seraphim, or the Cherubim, or both. Find out next not week. Not next week. Uh, no, no. We're, we're not here next week. Why? Why? Because of my surgery. We are here. No, we're not. <laughs>